Welcome to another episode of Vital Doc Talk. And today on the show, ladies and gentlemen, we have the legendary Dino Watt on the show. Um, he's actually an author. He's a, a very well-known strategist, marketing strategist in the healthcare world. Um, you know, he has his own niche. I can keep going on about him, but I'd like him to intro himself because he'll do a better job than me. Dino, why don't you tell us more about your background? All right. Thanks, Vlad, for having me on the show. First of all, I'm really honored and uh, I love being on this side of the microphone. Usually I'm interviewing people all the time, so I love being interviewed. It's great. Well, my background is really weird and sorted, if you will. I actually started in the movie and uh, entertainment industry 20, well, almost 30 years ago. That's not what I always wanted to do growing up. That was my passion. Uh, after having a, a family, my kids were really small. I had worked in the industry for a while. I was on a couple of series uh, in the technical side of things. And I just realized it wasn't conducive to ha having a family. The hours are insane. The, 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 it's just not a good, as an entrepreneur, uh, you learn a lot. And through the movie industry, you learn a lot about how you need to be an entrepreneur as well. So I shifted over into the real estate world and I started uh, doing pretty well in the, in, in, in the uh, real estate world where I would you know, flip homes and buy homes and stuff like that. But I wasn't passionate about it. What I was found out I was passionate about was the coaching side of things and helping people actually be in business uh, and be successful, especially couples, how they could learn to work together and their relationships that they could build there. And then uh, through some weird series of events, I end up coaching couples who were hiring entrepreneurs who wanted to, they were doctors, attorneys, lawyers, uh, orthodontists, dentists, and they wanted to learn how to grow their business without growing apart. And that was my tagline was how to do that. Wow. I, I ended up having a client, uh, a couple of clients in the dental world who, as you know, you know, suicide rates, huge in the nice. dental world, depression, mm -hmm. huge. And, uh, you know, strained marriages, huge. And so I started working that field a bit. That got me into the orthodontic space where I had a client who knew he was going to grow his business very big and had this huge vision, but he knew he couldn't do that and keep a strong marriage if he didn't have the marriage intact first, which was very smart of him. And he hired me. The stuff I was teaching him was helping him do better in his business. And he went, you know, why am I a better boss now? Why am I a better leader? And I said, oh, it's because I'm not teaching you how to be a better husband. I'm teaching you how to be a better human being, really, and how to have better communication and how to, um, how to, how to lead better. And like it, he had me come into his office, had me speak at a, um, a study club. And from there, it just took off. I had a whole bunch of people coming going, oh, you're, you're talking to us differently than a normal consultant. You're not seeing it as a normal consultant would because you're not from this space. And I spoke to them as a business owner. That's awesome. And then when did you decide to specialize in, you know, the doctor space slash dental? I think the dental world, that's really your niche, right? Yeah, um, it's, it's, it is definitely, I'd probably say more ortho um, in that space. I don't even know if I decided. It really was a matter of had more and more people coming to me. Well, that doctor in particular actually kind of opened my eyes to a few things. And this is no offense to anyone that's in the ortho space as a consultant or anything like that. But he basically came to me and said, do you know, we keep hearing the same message over and over again. We go to all these seminars and these, then we go to the webinars and these conferences and we hear the same message. If you took your message and honed it to this space, you would have an open door and people would listen. And so I'm, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. And so what I do is I fill holes where there are holes need to be filled. And I, uh, I created systems and processes. I wrote my first book and yeah, this kind of took off. And what's interesting is now it's reversing a little bit. There are people because of what I've done over the last four months with COVID and how much I've given to the communities that there are people from other communities that are now coming to me saying, Hey, can you come into our community and do this too? So it's been cool. I, I love that. Yeah. And I think that just shows you the power of niching down and then just dominating. And then people will see, wow, this person's great here. They've done a fantastic job. And now Dino's got a lot of other opportunities, which is why he's on the vital doc talk show guys. Thank you. Um, so very rarely do we have vendors on here, by the way, you know, we all have a couple, but most of the time I like to interview doctors because I think it's direct. However, yeah. somebody like Dino, who's written a book, has a lot of experience here. I thought it would be very valuable. 
So Dino, why don't we dive into one of my favorite sections, which is the marketing section, right? Yeah. So let's say, you know, you have a doctor, maybe they've been around for a couple of years. They're growing through word of mouth, whatever, five, 10% a year as they should be just through doing good, good work. What would be your tip for them? What's your favorite marketing channel? Obviously, you know, shameless plug. I wrote SEO for doctors. I love that field. What's your favorite channel? What do you recommend for them? Well, I absolutely agree with you that if they don't have their SEO dialed in at the very, I mean, before anything else, right? Because if somebody goes and finds you through Facebook or Instagram, they're immediately going to go to your website. And if you don't have the good Google reviews and you don't have the good web presence, or if somebody just gets like, let's just say they get, you know, Vladimir's name off of their Dr. Vlad and they Google Dr. Vlad, there might be 30 Dr. Vlad's. So if you don't have the right SEO going on, you're not going to show up in that area. So I think that is definitely one. Uh, the next one I probably would, would hone in on is Facebook because that's where moms are. Great. Uh, it really depends on who your ideal market is. And most, most doctors don't actually narrow that down at first is find out who their avatar is, who, yeah, if yeah. they could have only them all day long, they would crush it all day long. Right? Well, who is that person? Most of the moms are going to be on Facebook who are going to be your leeway. And we, and let's just face it. Obviously everybody knows that moms and women make most of the decisions, the buying decisions in the home. And so I would go Facebook and then probably secondarily would be Instagram. Um, I would have said pre like 48 hours ago, TikTok <laughs> might be when you want to start going on because the algorithm is amazing and who knows it, maybe it will be gone by the time this airs or not, but I don't, I don't think it will completely be gone, but the algorithm is really good for you to get attention. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We have never talked about TikTok on the show, by the way. Oh, really? So, yeah. I've had a couple episodes of Instagram, had a, you know, Facebook. I mean, we've done over 40 now, but um, tell me more about um, TikTok. What have you seen? Have you experienced anything on there? Yeah, so TikTok's a great, it's an amazing algorithm. It can grow really, really, really fast. And you don't have to do crazy stuff. Like a lot of, I know a lot of doctors, like maybe even a lot of team members will think that TikTok's good for teenagers, right? But actually there's a lot of businesses going on TikTok. There's a doc that I would suggest everybody follow. It's called um, the, oh my gosh, that's gonna, I'm gonna go blank. It is the, the braces guy. The braces guy is a, is a doc on the East coast. He has like over 1.5 million followers or something like that. Wow. Like kids know who he is. And what he's done is he's really taken the virality of TikTok and created videos with his whole team that are content videos, right? It's not just dancing or lip syncing certain things. It's him giving you content of understanding what your options are through Invisalign or braces or he uses different, he does a lot of stuff. He's very creative, spends some time doing it. But what it does is now it allows him to use TikTok as a launching platform to go over to my Instagram or go over to my website. And um, I mean, I actually just went through a, a course recently from a girl who's a TikTok influencer and she was on Instagram for six years. It took her six years to get up to 120,000 followers, right? On TikTok, she did that in three months. Yeah, because I think there's not a lot of content producers out there. And by the way, for doctors who don't know what TikTok is, Dino, why don't we describe that as well? Because I understand maybe some sure. of them haven't even created an Instagram yet, let alone yeah. a TikTok account. So um, you yeah, know, that's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, so there's obviously yeah. Snapchat. There's Small obviously, you know, everybody knows Facebook. They have a Facebook account. Then yeah. there's Snapchat. Then tell us, what is TikTok as a platform? How would you describe it? Because it so is a new social platform. It's a new wave, by the way. It's going on. Yeah, it is. So TikTok is really just a, it's another social media platform where it's, um, where people will do fun video. It's, it's 15 to, I'm uh, sorry, 30 to 60 seconds long only. You can't go longer than 60 seconds. So one of the reasons why people, huge influencers like Gary Vaynerchuk and stuff are saying you, even if you don't like TikTok, you need to be on TikTok because it forces you to share your message in a 60 second blurb. Mm -hmm. So think about it this way. If you only had 60 seconds, you know, back in the whole elevator pitch idea, right? Yep. But if you had 60 seconds to share your message with people that would make it unique and different, what would it be? And TikTok forces you to do that over and over and over and over again. And so 
there are people who, you know, I think it started off with a bunch of kids doing silly dances or fun dances yep. that go viral. It always does. Always yeah. the teenagers, right? And they like to have fun. Yeah. And I, and I say that with, if you look at my TikTok, you'll see I have dances on there because I'm a dancer. I love to dance. That's my exercise. And so I have my dance class on there. I have some silly things on there, but you can also throw up content, right? And one of the things like how you were saying earlier, you don't typically have vendors on here. Like I consider myself, I don't consider myself a consultant. I consider myself an advisor. And so I want to use TikTok as here's a little glimpse into my mindset and how I think. For example, if I was a doc, if I was an orthodontist, I would do stuff around what's the difference between an orthodontist specialist or someone who just does braces as a dentist? What's the difference between a dentist and orthodontist? What's the difference between a Bisline? I mean, you can keep going on and on and you can do the same thing in dental field. You can do that in any of the specialties. You just are educating people in 60 second blurbs. Okay. I, I, I liked, um, I, I like the, you know, the concept, right? Like if, if you think about yourself as a doctor, maybe you're like, great, this sounds like a fun platform. We want to be a part of it. Have you created any specific, uh, you know, I guess content yet on TikTok? Cause I, I find it personally for, for me and you know, doctors out there as well. It seems like we're like in this field, it's kind of anti, I don't want to say anti fun, but I guess that's, that's the closest <laughs> thing I can say. Right. Like, like, like the braces guy, how the heck does he make braces fun? So you could put it on this dancing entertainment platform. What would be some of your tips? Yeah. Like when, I'll, I'll even tell you one thing that he does is he has a, I, I, he did one, if everybody watched the Tiger King, right? And yeah, um, there was a song popular. going around about Carol Baskin that was really popular on TikTok. Well, he did a, um, he did a parody of a parody around uh, crunchy things. Like you shouldn't eat Cheetos. You shouldn't eat, you know, whatever, because it messes up your teeth, you know, or, you, or it messes up your braces. He'll do things where he'll take, um, and they're very fast, right? He'll take local, if it's uh, say football teams locally, he'll say, who's your favorite? And he'll do the colors on the bands of the braces and show a couple of flashes of those, like tell us who your favorite is. So it's interactive as well as, hey, I'm talking to you. I personally, for example, I just did one where uh, I teach around body language. I teach people how to understand body language, especially through the screen and things like that. And I did one around how to tell what people are thinking when they're, when they're wearing a mask, what to look for in the eyes to know what part of the brain they're accessing. It's 60 seconds long. It's super fast. It's not in depth, but it gives people a good idea of going, oh, that's interesting. And so it's little things like that. So people could do, gosh, they could do things about the sounds you hear. This is coming to my brain now. If I'm a dentist, this, the, the different sounds you'll hear in a dental office, right? Everybody knows the drill, you know, and the suction cup. And just like have fun with that because people just think, oh, that's fun. And they'll like it and they'll share it. And they just grow your brand will grow. It sounds like, and also maybe a better way to describe it also is like if, if Twitter, right? Because they have the short characters. And yes. I'm kind of had a baby. With that's video. a great way to describe that it. would be TikTok, this platform and um so okay let's pretend i'm a doctor out there right i've got an instagram account um and you know so i would say half the people watching this probably won't and then and then well, let's say for the other half that have an instagram account they want to get on TikTok now mm -hmm. they make a couple of fun things maybe they get 500 followers whatever right once you build your stuff up right like it's obviously practice you'll get up to 10,000, etc mm -hmm. just like with anything else you got to be consistent it's not going to come overnight yep. but it's going to be fast because TikTok's hot Let's say you get up to 100,000 followers. Do you know what would be your advice now for actually turning that into like a profitable thing that directly impacts business? How does that make a difference? And I think this also impacts uh, for social media in general, right? Like yeah, how would you turn I, that following? Well, uh, yeah, it's a great question because I think what most people often forget to do is no matter what you're doing, the call to action is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You do this, go here, be like this, uh, click on this. Uh, find out more about this here. So you always have to have that call to action of what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of education of you're going to get more clients through educating them than you will about telling them how awesome you are. Mm -hmm. And so if you actually say, hey, if you want to know five things you should know before you even think about getting orthodontics, go here. Uh, five reasons, uh, five differences between Smile Direct Club and, you know, uh, uh, orthodontics or braces, right? Whatever it is, educate them and have people go do something. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, through the sending them to where you want them to go, 
you actually can do certain uh, connections of like, hey, if you saw this video, when you call us, let us know and we'll give you 10% off of your cleaning or whatever, right? You're now telling them not only a call to action, but you're giving them an actual value right then and there. So there's yeah. just two ways. I think, I think that's very true, right? I think that eyeballs have a lot of power. Yes. You know how to use them, right? So it's like, I remember I saw a YouTuber who had a huge following, right? And he wanted to like get involved with like this famous producer. He was like, does anybody know this producer? Can you, can anybody introduce me? And mm -hmm. then he was introduced, right? Yep. And then it was like, can you guys all like, like all go like this famous producer's tweet, you know? Yep. And then that famous producer had a bunch of tweets liked and it said like, Hey, connect with this person. So I think, you know, building that brand can be very valuable and there's tons of ways to leverage it. Now, obviously there's, there is challenges during this times too, right? It's not all fun and TikTok. Mm -hmm. What have you seen in terms of COVID and, and how people have been challenged during this time? I know a lot of the doctors listening are obviously, we don't know what the, where the heck this thing is gonna go. For me interviewing two to three doctors a week, I have to say from my perspective is no doctor really knows what's yeah. gonna happen. But uh, what, what have you seen in terms of the market impact? You're definitely, I mean, I think you're right on it. It's, it's interesting, right? Before, uh, this is a little bit of a, a, of a caveat for it, but you know, when there was a disaster in this country or in any country, like we'd see tornadoes happen or flooding happen. And if you weren't in that space or in that area, you'd look at it and be like, oh man, I have a lot of empathy and sad for them. And that sucks, man. Ah, oh, man. Now everyone's in the same freaking boat. Like everyone's having the same problem. So yeah, no one knows what the heck to do with it. Um, my big push has been this. Literally, so this is the, the quick story of literally the, it was a Monday afternoon. I got a call from my, one of my clients who said, hey, we need to push my appointment because California Dental Association just suggested we shut down. And so I want to get my team home and, you know, we're going to be able to do our appointment. I'm like, totally fine. Tuesday happens and I see it popping up all over the place, right? So I did two things. I turned to my wife and I did two things immediately. I said, number one, uh, we're going to freeze all of the retainer fees from all of my clients because that time no one was talking about PPP or anything, right? No one had a clue what was going to happen. There was just this fear of I'm going to lose my, my team members. I, how can I afford to keep them? So I immediately just cut off all of the payments. And I said, you take care of those people, right? I want you to do that. Which That's of course good. my wife was like, um, okay. <laughs> Cause literally our income stopped overnight. Right. And then the second thing is I said, I'm going to serve and teach people more than I've ever done before for free about virtual appointments and how to go virtual because you can still stay in business if you know how to do it right. And I've been doing virtual stuff since 2010. Yeah. Speaking to people through the phone, uh, selling through the screen. I've been doing that for a long time. I never, ever, ever thought that this would be a piece of it. Like the body language thing I was talking about earlier, I never thought that I'd be teaching people how to look for clues and signs through the screen. And so I would tell everybody out there, your business is just in a pivot and evolution mode. There was an evolution already starting to happen. Now you've just been forced to do it. So whatever you can do to get things virtual, go virtual. Number one, it's smart because you're going to be able to do it no matter what's happening with COVID. And number two, and of course, you're always going to have to see people in your uh, office, right? But the time that you're going to need to see them in there is totally drastically reduced. But number two is you actually will be ahead of the curve by giving people convenience and giving them back their time that you won't be one of those people that they need to cut off because of payments. It'll be, you'll, you'll be a savior to them. So use it. So that's what I think people should be going for sure. That's my number one. Like, I, I like that. I, I, and I think that's, those are really strong tips, by the way, to using COVID as an advantage, yes. right? Because you can go digital and, you know, when you were on a digital marketing agency, I didn't know you know, I thought I was, I was lucky that I get to do this over and, and Dino's obviously ha has a lot of great experience there. So you guys should definitely uh, check them out when, uh, you know, when it comes to taking your practice virtual. Um, so Dino, tell us if, if there's a doctor, I guess, out there and you listening to this podcast, right. And there's a lot of, you're, like, you're probably like a fire hydrant of information and experience, what would be kind of one takeaway or tip that they should implement for their own practice first, right? Where should they start? Well, I, I'm going to go back to the virtual thing. I think you start there with really understanding how to, uh, to, to deliver even a piece of what you do through the screen. So I have doctors who be like, but I don't want to sell through the screen and da, da, da. Fine. Then just do your retainer check through the screen. 
uh, do your, uh, your check-ins with your patients through the screen. Whatever it is that you can do to connect with them through the screen, give them that convenience and do so. Now, it's going to be different for every doctor, and the biggest intimidator is being on the screen. A lot of people, I didn't, I didn't really totally comprehend this. I don't know if you know or not, but I did my- I think because you were probably always doing it, right? Yeah, and, and I just thought, I mean, I, I get it. I was weird on camera too when I first started and stuff, but um, did you know that I did that selling through the screen challenge? Did you hear about that? No, no, tell us more. So I did a, I did a five day selling through the screen challenge. Um, I've done it twice now, we'll be doing it some more, but the point was to help people connect, communicate and close through the screen. The thing that came out of it though, cause five days of getting on, I trained for an hour and then I'd all give them a challenge and they had to do something to get over their fear of this or that, or the other. The thing that came out of it that I didn't recognize or realize at the very beginning was people really have a hard time seeing themselves on screen and not feeling awkward and weird and not so having obvious. an audience in front of them. So it, it was a really cool thing that came out of it of so many people are like, I can't believe in five days I got over this fear of being in front of the screen and now I have more confidence and stuff. So if we want to really narrow it down to one thing, start being in front of your screen more often. Use your FaceTime, use Zoom on your phone, get a, Zoom, a good camera on your computer and start doing that because I believe it is the future and it's not going away. That's, that's a really good, really practical piece of advice and really tactical, by the way, for you doctors listening out there who don't have a lot of screen meetings, because what that'll do is that'll compound over time, right? Yes. Maybe it's just invoicing first, right? Then maybe it's team yes. meetings. Then, then, okay, maybe I'm going to have an existing client, right? Like one that already knows me, he's not going to judge me or she's not going to judge me. Yeah. Then you've got new potential clients and now you actually, you're, it's completely virtual. So that's a fantastic piece of advice, do you know? So I think, I think you've done a fa phenomenal job on this interview, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Plug it up. Go ahead. Let us know more about you. Where can we find you? What should we be checking out? What should we be reading and learning? Um, yeah, absolutely. I want to first, uh, I just want to tag on to what you just said there. I, I think it was very smart. I never thought about that. Well, I didn't not, never think about it. But, you know, you want to connect more with your teams without having to come in on an off day so you can keep this place sterile. Do virtual meetings, right? Like you just said, like connecting mm -hmm. with them through the screen. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I would love if anybody wants to join the selling through the screen challenge. It's like, I think, the, I think it's 19 bucks. I can't remember. We did 19 and 49, but to get on and have your whole team on there to learn how to connect to the screen. We're doing another one, August 10th. So we'd love to have you join that. Reach out to me. You reach out to me at Dino at Dino .com. It's pretty simple. D I N O W A T T no S.com. And uh, yeah, I'm on all the social medias. I am on TikTok. You can check out some of my fun TikTok stuff. And uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. But I'm always, like, my goal is just to really deliver as much content and value as possible. So if you have any questions or thoughts, you know, I'm not here to hawk anything. I don't, obviously, I'm in business. I do sell what I do. But the first thing to me is always about building relationships. The reason why I'm on this show with you, Vlad, because you were so nice to be on my podcast. And, you know, I, I just think it's about building relationships. 100%. You know, one thing I think that, you know, you guys obviously remember Dino stuff and reach out to him because he really cares. And that's one of our, if you go to our website, you go to the about page, that's our number one value. And I think that's the future, nice. especially with everything becoming transparent. So thanks again, Dino, so much. So this was Dino Watt with another episode of Vital Doc Talk. Thank you guys.